The NBA has finally agreed to a new CBA. Me and JB are going to talk about it a little bit. What, what will the new CBA bring to the NBA? How would it hurt some teams? We're going to get to all that and more right after this. Welcome to the number one place for your daily basketball news and analysis, NBA Central. All right, JBZ. Glad to have you in the building. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. Well, first up, the new CBA. Let's talk about the thing that I, I don't. I, probably one of the more perplexing things in it, the the new in season tournament. Now, if those that watch the WNBA knows the WNBA was doing this for a few seasons now, and it seems like they test a lot of things there before they bring it over to the NBA. Adam Silver's wanted to get this tournament. Um, that's kind of why the plan was created. Now they're also doing a mid season tournament. Uh, most of these games are gonna are gonna be part of the normal eighty two games with the final two teams, the final four teams playing uh, additional two more games potentially. JB, how do you feel about a uh, midseason tournament for the NBA? I, know, I, I don't see why, as a fan, uh, you wouldn't love this. It's more something to give you. You know, you, during the middle of the season, there's a little bit of a a lull. Um, you know, you have some hype going into All Star break and coming out of All Star break. It's kind of a little bit of a lull going into uh, until like about the last month or so uh, when it comes up to playoffs. So at least you have some action going on in the middle of the thing. Now, as a player, I. I don't think the players are going to like this. I mean, I, I don't know because what, what's the purpose of this? Like, what's the advantage? Yes, it's regular season game, so it counts towards your standings. But mm. is there any significance to this? Uh, you know, does the winner get automatic home court advantage in the playoffs if they make it? Like, what's the significance here? What's the stop? Well, I was going to say, what's to stop the teams from just playing their bench players? But, no, they can't do that because this is still part of the 82-game season, so it's got to win games. I just don't see, from a player point of view, what the significance of it is. Well, I mean, they did add that each team of the winning team gets a half a million bucks. That's basically what it is. The losing team doesn't get anything. But these are players that are people that are already millionaires. So it's like uh, – I, I just the thing that I worry about the, this and and yeah it's going to be fun just like the playing the playing tournament has had so much interest to the took for the 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 end of the season because like my team which is locked into the tenth seed the Bulls would have been eliminated from playoffs it wouldn't have been any any point of fighting for anything but I, when I, I look at this and I say all right cool this is cool for fans right but the way that I look at it is like how long until is this going to last it's going to be new it's going to be fresh but at, at one point like what okay the players get a half a million bucks but what 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 benefit is it to the fans, right? What, 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 like, I get it. We get extra basketball plus the playing. We get a, a couple of more extra games. But for me, it's like, what? They get to hoist another trophy. Okay, cool. There is a fan you are. So yeah. let me, let me tell you what that. Assuming the way this tournament is going to be done, it's going to be NFL. Like, you know, one, there's no series. It's one and you move on. Now, yeah. Now, as a Nick fan shit in 30 some odd <laughs> years, bro, Summer League, I'm watching that shit hard. I'd be like, yo, I'll take a Summer League championship all day and I'll rock with that shit all day for the rest of my life. Just give me something. And this is a chance, especially if it's like a one and done type of tournament. We're literally hot for a week and win the thing. So you could have a team, you know, as atrocious as, you know, Orlando that could just get hot at the right time and give their fans something to cheer about. In otherwise a uh, uh, crappy season. Agreed, agreed. I mean, I guess we'll see. I, I guess we'll see. We'll watch out how how it happens over the first the first year, which is it's starting immediately next season. So we're good to see it next season. Um, we'll before see, we we'll before see. we wrap up that category, I want to ask you though, mm -hmm. if you were the commissioner, what is some sort of dangling? to make the players want more because let's be real five hundred thousand dollars is literally nothing to these people what is something they can do that won't sway it too much like you know home court advantage in the finals or anything what's something they can do bro i have no idea i don't know how you incentivize NBA. like the WNBA players it like it's different right because they they already don't make much money unfortunately which they should make more um but nba i really don't know bro like because you can't – there's no way that I, I think feasible you can work like a playing tournament to say like, hey, you, like you're, you're guaranteed the 10th – like you can't do make it mean anything in the postseason. So it's like I don't I don't know, bro. That's one of the things – I'm glad they pay people that are supposed to be a lot smarter than me to come up with a, that type of shit because I have no idea how to incentivize players when it comes to this. What if if, if you win it automatically? 
if you win it, you automatically get a uh, draft pick in the first round. The last draft, uh, you get an extra draft pick in the first round, like the 33rd pick or whatever it may be, 30 seconds. I mean, at that be. point, it's just another second round pick, and most second round picks don't amount to anything. So, I mean, if you're a smart franchise, if you're a smart GM, I could see that being incentivized for the for the GM for the team, not necessarily the players, but I could see that incentivizing uh, them a little bit just because a, a GM that's highly intelligent, they're going to look at that and say, "Listen, I can I can get some talent in the second round," but most GMs they don't. Yeah, I hear you. I don't know, man. Hey, we'll see. We'll see what it, that ends up turning into. But let's get into the next thing. So they changed. They added a second tax apron, and so what does that basically mean? Is that Everybody knows, so let me not say everybody. To explain it, the league has a salary cap, but then they, you can go over that salary cap into the luxury tax, and there's a period between there. There's a period between the, the salary cap and the luxury tax where you're penalized but not as much. You go over the luxury tax, you're paying a huge amount of money per the, the dollar that you're over the luxury tax. They've now added a secondary tax apron that is basically limited how far you can go over the luxury tax. And so just for example, some of the things that would have been um, some of the teams that are going to be affected by this just in next season that could be dealing with unless they make some moves, the Hawks, the Celtics, uh, the Nuggets, the Warriors, the Clippers, the Lakers, the Heat, the Bucks, the 76ers, and the Suns. As a matter of fact, had this, this new CBA been in place, the Suns would not have been able to trade for KD. Dallas wouldn't have been trade, able to trade for Kyrie. Uh, Harden wouldn't have went to Brooklyn initially. So that, that we're talking about huge deals that would have not gone down. I'm going to ask you this. They're, they're, uh, Draymond Green has already come out and said that because of this new rule, it may put an end to true dynasty. He said the Warriors may be the last great dynasty. JB, I'm going to ask you this. Do you think owners can get creative enough or GMs can get creative enough? Still, it's going to take some year to adjust to it to where we can still see dynasties? Or do you think that something this restrictive could potentially put the kibosh on dynasties the way that we know them? No, I don't, I don't. I think you could still get a dynasty, but it's this is going to make drafting that much more important because mm. where in other ways you could just you know be or a Kyrie or a Luca or whoever it may be. Now drafting yeah. to be super important because for you to build that dynasty, you're gonna have to draft some great prospects, and yeah. you're not gonna be able to build like I do think if you're asking. Um, rather than that Draymond about uh, Dynasty being dead, I think we can say maybe the super team might be mm. dead. Uh, I think the super team may be dead. A homegrown super alive, but just drafting, you know, two, three players, like how, you know, Miami did it, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's dead and gone. That, that'll, that'll be dead, which for me, I, I like. I want to see it even – like I've enjoyed this season so much. I have absolutely no idea at the end of this season who's going to hold that title. And I love that fact. I love it. I love that fact. Yeah, I mean, this has been the season of parody. Parody has been a big thing this season, so that makes uh, that makes sense. And here's the thing that I do like: it makes the, the point that you made. It makes drafting that much more important because, for example, the Golden State Warriors were able to become a dynasty because a lot of the players they drafted developed into stars, and the, and they, that team was just constructed in a really great way so you're able to plug in the holes yeah they they got lucky but not let me say lucky but they benefited from the salary cap going up hugely and then they were able to sign kd while they still had players on rookie scale deals that's how that ended up happening but it's it's now it's really going to separate the man-made super teams and you put that greatly like the 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 warriors they still have a chance to build that type of super team the the miami heats the the brooklyn nets which were a failed super team those are going to be fewer and far between. So now holding on to your draft picks, I think we're also going to see teams now be more selective. Like this trade that we saw this year, five first round picks for Rudy Gobert. We may never see a trade of that magnitude again, because holding on to your own picks and drafting well is going to be that much more important going forward. Also, I do think we're going to see less of the, what I call the hit harder play for this team. Get me out. Mm. Because now be able to afford to bring somebody on um like that depending on what the trade may be and things like that i think that it's going to factor into a lot of different things i don't think the yeah. players are going to have um as much ability to just be like yeah get me out of here get me to another team i think that that's going to put a little bit of a will it may it may still happen yes i think it's gonna be more difficult to happen though and I think like that what you hear going around with Jalen Brown maybe wanting out of Boston, it's going to put a test to this because, it, it, yeah, he'll get the money regardless. But 
it's like, what team are you going to go? Like, how much have you now strapped the team to be able to add to that team? And then Boston, for example, you know, they have added where, you know, te- teams keep keeping their own guys a little bit easier now because now you can offer higher extensions. You can even add on an additional year on top of that. But it's 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 just like in, in, in when usually when a new CBA brings rules, there's usually a year or two before you really get to see that. We're seeing that this summer, we're going to see the results of these new wrinkles added to the CBA. And it's going to be make it real interesting to how teams build for the future, because now you really have to future forecast. It's no more. We're just about to throw all this money at you. And then we'll keep adding players with the mid-level exception going forward. Because once you get to that tax apron, you lose your ability yeah. to do that. So exactly it's, yeah it's gonna be gonna be real interesting to see man you're it, gonna need to see some and you said it earlier you're gonna need to see some smart and creative gyms the, those guys that can be able to think on the fly those are the gyms that are gonna end up getting paid two three four years facts big facts there um the next thing that i want to talk about and this is the thing that i was kind of i've been looking at all season and i've been saying that and I, and I think you saw kind of the season because a lot of teams did not give up their 2024 first round pick unless they were getting a superstar back because there was that potential that next year's draft, not this year's draft, but next year's draft would have possibly been the first draft that allowed high school players back in. So that would have been a double draft. A lot of teams didn't give up their first round picks because maybe they were maybe hoping that, that was going to be the case. Well, the NBA keeps the age restriction. So one and done still going to be a thing. No more high, still no high school players being allowed to come in. Now the NBA has created it uh, to where, you know, high school players, high level high school players can decide to go to the G League for a year, then enter the NBA draft to the G League elite. But uh, what do you think about the, the one and done rule still staying the thing? Personally, I would have almost rather see them if they're not going to do it, make it a two and done rule. Like make it, make them have to be two years in college, kind of like the NFL. But what do you think about it, JP? Well, um, actually, I'm a little confused because I though I could have swore I saw that the one and done is there, but a player can get drafted at the age of 18, isn't that? I could have swore it said they could get drafted at the age of 18. So if in high school at 18, they can start going to college. Am I, did I read that incorrectly? No, yeah, no, they they still have to wait. They would have to go to the G League at that point. Uh, mm. or, or go to college, they still would have to wait that initial year before they could go in, even though they're 18. Yep, okay, so okay, I, that, okay, yep. Yeah. So, I mean, it is what it is. I would have really loved to see um, them get rid of the one and done just because you, you never know who come, we might have Kobe, we had LeBron, we had KG, some great Sean Kemp, I think, came out of decent players coming out of high school, yep. and it, it's interesting, but. To the players themselves, also coming out of high school, you're a 17 year old kid. No matter what, you still have a lot of chore to do. So, I that perspective, whether it's in the G League or in, in college, to do that. And also, um, I, I don't know how long, how much longer it's going to last. Like, I, I don't know how long this CBA agreement is for. What is it for seven years? Seven years, yeah. Yeah, we'll probably. I'm sure f- this will be the last time we see that because I know they're going to push for that. They're going to eventually push for that. I, I, is is my, in my I believe. Yeah, I think they're going to, and I think too. Like, yeah, college basketball is, is fun, right? Don't get me wrong. And I think like even the co- some colleges, if they're admitting it, they probably would want a either more string uh, strong rule or to just allow the high school players to come in because you're you're building these like there's no longer where programs can build a two three year program because a lot of players are coming in. You know they're going to be gone the next year. So the good thing is from a college player perspective. Mm-hmm. Normally, I, I I would take this news as like, oh man, that sucks. Now I gotta I gotta wait a year. However, I, I believe we talked about this in another episode. College players now can get paid for their likeness. It's so true. even though they're going to college, maybe for a minimum of one year, they can still at least start making some money. Yeah. yeah that's, um, that's which I and then you know if they want to go for a draft at Louisiana at that point they can. But at least they have some sort of revenue coming in. That's fact. That's fact. Uh, I like that. Um, now, another one of the kind of weird things, the NBA has now made it mandatory for 65 games to be played for to be eligible for postseason awards and all NBA teams. Um, now, this was kind of a soft rule already kind of in place that they're just making it a more strenuous one. What do you think in the in the, in the era of load management and, you know, teams trying to be more uh, aware of, you know, player and, and injury management to try to, to manage those? Joel and B comes to mind. What do you, how do you feel as a as a basketball fan about the rule of it being a mandatory 65 games play? 
Bro, I've been saying this shit forever, bro. And I, like, I come from old school mentality where, like, what the fuck is load management? So, I, I, I you know, we're or at least the type of load management I'm used to has nothing to do with sports. It has, uh, that, we'll leave that for NBK. But <laughs> there, there, there's no sort of, um, they should have been doing that because you can have a player that, like, has a certain stat and wants to hold on to it, plays, uh, you know, a certain amount of games and then stops playing just they can hold on to that stat for whatever the case may be. So That's I'm okay. absolutely glad that they have 65, um, it's 65 game minimum. And hopefully this deters players from wanting to sit out, you know, sit out games that they ordinarily wouldn't. Um, it's going to only be those players who are actually in the running for some sort of award. And some That's players... True. Some players may not even give a shit about the award. The load manager means more. Um, so they may not even give give a crap about the award. They're like, hey, I, I rather like if their team is a contender, that title means more to them than you know, a defensive player of the year. Oh, it's a great accolade. At the end of the day, everybody's after that title. Maybe not LeBron James, but everybody else. <laughs> I feel that. Now, another one of the rules is that uh, they are now allowing uh, all teams to have an additional two-way contract. So before it was two, they're adding a third one. So 30 extra roster spots are basically opening up for players and things. Now, I don't know how much you watch the G League. That's one thing me and you, as long as we've been friends, I don't think we've ever talked about G League basketball. I don't even know if you watch G League regularly. Um, I there have been a lot of success stories. Go ahead. Sorry, I was going to say, I watch a little bit of it, um, especially the last two or three seasons. Because Knicks have had as had a lot of great prospects, Jericho. So I watch some, some of those guys in the G League, but I don't follow it as a whole. Just you know, the Knicks G League. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, we so you know recent success stories of coming through the G League on two way contracts. Austin Reeves and Alex Caruso when they uh, both through the Los Angeles Lakers. Duncan Robinson, Max Struess, uh, Jose Alvarado, who I really do like oh, uh, as well. That. Uh, Lou Dortz for OKC Thunder. These are some success stories. So I think as the NBA is really trying to make the G League a true developmental league, this was a smart move to me. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, hundred uh, percent. You can never complain about roster size, especially in a league where injuries happen. It's a long, you know, it's not uh, um, football. Although I, I understand for, and physical, but it's a long, drawn out eighty-two game season roster spots and. A lot of fun things, as you just mentioned, some of them can come out of the G League. So that's the G League to generate talent and more guys will have opportunity, which, you know, can't hate on that. Yeah, I mean, so basically they're taking away a top level by, by adding in that extra salary cap apron, which I don't think I gave the number. It's basically seventeen and a half million dollars over whatever the luxury tax is. If you, like that's as high as you can go. If you if you if you reach that, you lose your ability to to uh, the taxpayer mid level exception. You 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 uh, lose the ability to uh, send uh, cash and trades, uh, move first round picks in drafts that are seven years. Well, you lose a lot. But they're adding in the ability to develop players. So you can't go after the proven talent, but maybe you it, it highlights, as we've been saying throughout this development, by now adding that additional two-way contract. So now you may look at it as – here's the thing. Let me ask you this. I, I know we both are big sports guys overall. Do you ever think the G League would truly become like a minor league system like in, in, in Major League Baseball to where you really do cultivate kind of some of your next-level talent down in the G League? I think it is now. I mean, we see get, we see we see guys get. I mean, not to that level of uh, MLB where every single person is coming out of the farm system, but yeah. we see guys drafted all the time from the G League. So uh, are getting picked up or, or you know getting played or whatever. So I think it's a farm system now. And if any team is not using that as a genuine farm system, they're nuts because it has to be used as a farm system. That's where the that and obviously college. That's where you're getting your next, next level talent. The player now, they're not going to be stars fish now. This is where you get the league is perfect because they're playing in front of a crowd. It's not college ball. It's maybe one level up, but they're playing good talent. So, yeah, for sure, they should be looking at that farm system. Fair. Fair enough. So, I, I, overall, the new CBA, I, I understand it. I understand that it's going to have to make uh, the cream of the crop. The, the, the smarter GMs are really going to start shining in this. And I do think, you know, towards what we've pointed out now, developing is even more important. Drafting is, is more important. Uh, contracts, like, you know, who you sign to an extension because, you know, and in, in, in managing your cap space, actually future forecasting for cap space and not just giving away contracts willy nilly. Because if you do give away a huge contract that ends up biting you in the foot, not only is it going to bite you in the ass, but it, not only is it going to do that, but it's also going to um, 
maybe risk you being able to add more talent to your team if you give out a contract to the wrong person. So overall, I like it, man. You, you see teams um, give up like everything for a player or two and absolutely derail the franchise for years. Dallas like said, Mavericks with Kyrie. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and now, and now, like, Luke, I read a thing today, like, for those who don't know, I'm a Knicks fan. Not today. I read it a couple days ago where, like, they're, like, making potential trades like Luca for, like, half our team. I'm like, hold that. I love Luca, but hold that. Like, that, that, n to me, there is no – and I'll probably get flack for this, but there is no player in the NBA. Maybe outside of Yon, probably being biased because he's my favorite, that is worth giving up half your team for or, or all your assets – there's no, there's, I'm sorry, but there's, there's nobody. And, and the only one I would no, even think about is Giannis. That's it. Yeah. I mean, there we're, we're coming out of the place where, like I, I've said this before and I've got some flack for it. There's only like five true superstars in the NBA. And that by superstar, I mean players that just that player being on your roster, almost with whatever else you fill them around is going to get you in the playoffs. Outside of that, you have a lot of stars, but you, you, the, the, the days of, mortgaging your future completely a la the, the minnesota timberwolves who gave up five first round picks for rudy gobert like i'm sure they're looking at that now and saying damn we really and, and keep in mind they gave up a first round pick all the way till 2029 there's a chance that towns gobert even anthony edwards may be, not be on the roster then and you're not even gonna you could potentially have the worst roster in the nba and you won't even get to keep your pick that's wild bro. they they 10 years that, that right. at least for the next five to ten years, and the sad part of it is they're going to literally get nothing. They're they're never going to see a Western Conference Finals. They're never going to see a championship. They're they're literally getting nothing. It's the same thing going back to again my Knicks when all everyone was like, oh, get rid of everyone and get Donovan Mitchell. We would have done that. I mean, they finish what they're going to end up finishing maybe two games above us, and we have a good shot to beat them in the first round. And we still kept our team. We still kept our assets. We still kept our roster. You know what I mean? Agreed, bro. It's, there's it's, what before we close off, there's something else I want to talk about real quick. I, I don't okay. know if this is tied into the CBA, but more than anything, I'm fucking excited about this. And you'll be like, what the hell? And it's the fact that the media rights is almost up. Um, or it should be up and what about it? TV, TV contract, I think it's up. I think it's up next season, which they got to renegotiate. Are is that what you're talking about? The TV contracts, yeah. Yes, I'm, I, I'm excited for that for a couple. I think if you're going where I'm going, I'm excited about it too. But go ahead, don't let me step on you. No, I have a feeling you're going to go into streaming, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you your say in a second. But for me, it's okay. more for a nostalgic reason. And for those who don't know, I grew up in New York. And I remember on those Saturday afternoons on NBC, Ahmad Rashad, and it's like pregame, the Knicks are playing whoever, like, you know, 2 o'clock. And it's just a nostalgia thing. I loved when the NBA was part of NBC and they had shows like inside stuff. I don't know if you remember that back in the day. And I just, mm -hmm. it's just for a simple nostalgic reason. There's maybe an angle that I'm not seeing here that you're about to talk about, which is way better than what I'm talking about, but just for nostalgic reasons, I would love for them to go back to NBC. Well, you know, the, I mean, the theme here is I stole part of the NBC theme and, and, and remixed it to, for our intro music. So that's definitely nostalgic. Did you? Yeah. You didn't notice that when I played. I did not. Uh, okay, I, when we get off, I'll play for you again. But, um, I was going to go into the streaming aspect because if I don't know if you See, know. See, that's how well but, I know you. But, yeah. So, for example, I live in Columbus, Ohio. I don't leave, live in Cleveland. But when the Bulls play the Cleveland Cavaliers, I can't watch the game on NBA League Pass just because it's being aired in my state. That was one of the, the restrictions of the current t TV deal. So one of the things Adam Silver wants to remove is that limitation. So basically, as long as you're in the NBA League Pass app, you can watch any game anywhere on the app. And I think that that's going to be something important going forward because, like me, I'm a huge Bulls fan. I'm not a Cavs fan. I don't even live in Cleveland. The games that are air on 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 regular TV on Cleveland don't air here because I'm in Columbus. So it it's 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 restrictive to for me to be for the game to be blocked out or blacked out on NBA League Pass for me when I don't technically live in Cleveland. So I'm I'm looking forward to them removing that type of restriction because that's just it's stupid to me. Can can we rewind for a second? So you I know you live in Ohio. So you're saying can be blacked out? Is, what, what are you What are you saying? When they face when they play in Cleveland. Okay, because you're you're in your market. Yeah. Um, I don't know how this works for the Knicks, but there's something new that they have now where the Nick you could purchase Knicks and Rangers, 
and no matter where you live, you get all the games, and it is a package. And it's Knicks and Rangers game. You know, that's, they have because, the same. that's because the, the Knicks own their own TV network, right? They own like the, the MSG. Yeah, they own MSG yeah. and, and Dolan owns yeah. MSG and Dolan owns both, you know, James Dolan owns both teams. Yeah. Um, but okay, yeah, that's probably why. But what I'm saying is um, I'm shocked that they, they haven't come out with a service on there. Um, and I could have I could have swore NFL did this at least one year where you can pick your team, like you're a Chicago Bulls fan, and get all their games regard you pay X amount and you get all their games. Or you could pick two teams. I could have swore NFL did that one year or two years because I remember I, I think that. I did it for the Jets. Yeah, NFL did that one year. NBA never did. So, yeah, yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. But overall, uh, solid new CBA leaves a lot to talk about, man, and we'll discuss it. JB, you got anything left before we go, man? No, man, no. Playing right. starting soon. Ah, see sure. what you Bulls do. Uh, uh, listen, I just want this season to be over. I'm tired of these motherfuckers. But anyway, you guys can follow us at NBA Central Pod on every social media platform. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, NBA Central Show at gmail.com. And lastly, if you want to leave us a text message and our voicemail, 773-270-2799. Uh, we out here. I'll see, the, see you guys next time. I feel like making a video. Probably tomorrow, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Breaks, Breaks Media. 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 Media.